Okay, good afternoon everyone. So today is Sunday and our blogging kit has arrived. The purpose of bringing this blogging kit was twofold. One, earlier we were recording from the iPhone or our mobile phones in the hospital. So during the recording, some phone comes, so recording get dis uh, disturbed and we had to start from the scratch again. We can't put the our phone on the flight mode being in the ICU. Secondly, the there was mic and issue. Mic issue was also there which I think will be solved by this. Another thing will be, now we can record the uh, videos on the go towards the hospital or coming from the hospital or in between so that we can sh share with you our experiences more frequently. Uh, we may not know everything, but we want to share whatever we know, whatever is our experience. That's why that is the tagline of ICU.in, sharing what's critical. So now I'm going towards the ICU and we'll discuss something interesting. Do let me know how how you feel about this sort of recording, this sort of vlog. Uh, or I always say my team that we need to be sincere in the ICU and emergency, not serious. Because most of our time, 70, 50, 70 percent of our time remains in the hospital and we are working in a very stressful environment. So our humor, our light moments will come from here only. We need to learn, we need to read. And the more we need learn, more we read, more um, knowledge we can share, the more confident we will become and the anxiety part will go down. So let's head toward the hospital and let's see what we can discuss today. Okay, so yesterday we discussed something about blood components, RBCs, platelets and FFPs. So I thought of discussing something more about this and we'll discuss massive transfusion protocol. So what happens in massive transfusion protocols, first we we'll see the definition. So definition is very abbreviatory. Earlier they used to say that if you transfuse more than 10 units of blood within 24 hours to a patient, trauma patient or any patient in which the uh, who is bleeding or you require blood, then it will be called as massive blood transfusion. But there is a flaw in it. Suppose we give 9 units to a patient in 24 hours. So whether this will come into massive transfusion or not. Secondly. In one patient, we gave uh, 10 units within 4 hours. And in another patient, we gave 10 units in 24 hours. Are they same? Not only this. If we gave this 10 units to a 70 kg patient, if we this, give this 10 units to a 110 kg patient, if we give this 10 units to a 20 kg patient. So whether both will be, all these three will be equal or not. So that definition is uh, having its own flaw. Somewhat similar to this is ultra massive transfusion protocol, uh, ultra massive transfusion, in which they say that if you, uh, you need to transfuse more than 20 units of blood within 24 hours, so it has the same uh, flaw with it. Now, to sort out this, they came up with one more thing critical administration threshold dash one means one stands for one hour. So, if they say they if, uh, if a patient requires more than three units of RPCs in one hour, then Plasive transfusion protocol should be activated and then similarly CAT2, CAT3 uh, was came up. Sim uh, somewhat related to it was resuscitation intensity, intensity score in which more uh, le they told that more than 4 if you need to transfuse then it uh, resuscitation intensity score should be um, calculated and it was within 30 minutes but uh, it's not in much use. Then there are two types of uh, definition more prevalent. One is uh, hemorrhagic control transfusion, in which they transfuse platelet and plasma, fresh frozen plasma, before uh, giving PRBCs, with a opinion, with a uh, thought in mind that we have resuscitated the patient with saline, so uh, there will be diagnosal coagulopathy, and we need to correct that so that uh, the patient will require less amount of the RBCs or will not develop coagulation, uh, coagulopathies. Similar to this was damage control transfusion in which other than the transfusion they also take care of hypothermia, acidosis and fibrinosis sort of things. But the common one which is used is the ratio based, 1 is to 1 is to 1. Means if you require massive transfusion you should give 1 PRBC, 1 platelet and 1 FFP. Means 1 PRBC, 1 FFP, 1 platelets, the sequence is like that. Some centers use that 2 is to 1 is to 1, uh, 2 PRBC, 1 FFP and 1 platelet. But there was also flaw in that and the 
place where it was used was in USA and there the platelet unit which they counted was single donor platelet while in many other countries it was random donor platelet so there is a difference in the quantity of platelet uh, in that but this is the most common used or the ratio based 1 is to 1 is to 1 which we use uh, in our unit massive transfusion protocol so what should be the threshold for this okay i have raised my hospital so what should be the what should be the threshold for transfusion uh, of plasma and platelets along with this so uh, what we think is uh, we consider two things one is the duration and the second is the quantity suppose a cirrhotic patient comes with upper gi bleed a melina and we hemoglobin is somewhat around 6 and 7 and we need only he's some sort of stable and we need to transfuse two units today and two units later on after 24 hours then we won't activate uh, massive transfusion protocol because the we are giving time the patient to recover there is no dilutional coagulopathy in this but uh, acute if a, if we are uh, uh, having a patient which is bleeding profusely and we need to transfuse the patient uh, RBCs within a short period of time like 3-4 units within 6 hours or something like that. So in active bleeding patient or in a hemodynamically unstable patients when you need fluid resuscitation and you need more than 3 to 4 units of packed red blood cells, we usually give it along with uh, 1 is to 1 is to 1 ratio. So 1 PRBC, 1 uh, plate, uh, FFP and 1 platelet. The reason for giving this uh, all these three components is there happens a dilutional coagulopathy because the red blood cell does not cont contains your coagulation factors and also they are deprived of the platelets. So only the RBCs are going uh, but the platelets and uh, plasma are not going so uh, and also we are given lots of fluid. So there happens a dilutional coagulopathy and there are chances that the patient may bleed his INR and may uh, get deranged and there is chance of developing thrombocytopenia. So this patient can land in DIC. So whenever we require 3-4 units of blood in a very short um, uh, period of time, we will transfuse in a manner 1 is to 1 is to 1. Some centers use 2 is to 1 is to 1, 2 PRVC, 1 plasma, 1 platelet. We use random donor platelet. So it has uh, proven to be a uh, good uh, strategy uh, in our daily practice. Do share your uh, uh, practices and your experience also regarding this. But uh, what I want to tell you, it's not about the definition, it's not about the protocols. You need to have an idea that transfusing a large amount of packed red blood cells within a short period of time without giving plasma and without giving platelets can develop to dilution and coagulopathy, which needs to be taken care of. Whole blood is not. Uh, uh, will not solve your purpose because the storage temperatures of blood, plasma and platelet is different and whole blood uh, cells is, are also deprived of platelets. Though they may have some coagulation factors but they are deprived of platelets. So in, a, in the modern era all three components are uh, given separately. So the idea is in whenever you require large amounts of PRBCs, give and or consider giving FFPs and platelets to this patient even if the initial reports are normal because they will develop the coagulation uh, dilution coagulopathy a little later or DIC a little later on the second day or third day. So do let me know how uh, you people like this uh, blogging sort of medical educational blogs I can say. Do read more about massive transfusion protocol. Thank you.